Hi, and welcome to the first episode of The Showreel. I'm Kat, if you don't know me, that's who I am. Um, in this series, I hope to, I want to delve into um, you know, mysteries and scandals and urban legends and the odd kind of focus on a certain person in Hollywood or like in the movie business or in, in the entertainment business that I find really interesting. So, without further ado, Let's get straight into it, shall we? <laughs> the first person in the series is, I wouldn't say commonly known as, but we'll just go with that because that's a nice turn of phrase. <laughs> the first person in the series is commonly known as the patron saint of out of work actors. Very fitting, very fitting. <laughs> I have a full time job though, does that count? Who knows? <laughs> Peg Entwistle was born in 1908 on the 5th of February in a town called Port Talbot in Glamorgan in Wales in the United Kingdom. She was named uh, Millicent Lillian Entwistle um, and her father Robert was also an actor. Oh yeah, did I say she's an actor? It is commonly thought that Peg's mother died when she was younger but um, it was stated in her father's will at the time of his death and I need to read this that Millicent Lillian Entwistle is the daughter of my first wife whom I divorced and the, and the custody of my said daughter was awarded to me. I do not desire my said daughter to be at any time in the custody or control of her said mother. Now this to me, if that was in his will at the time, it kind of makes you think maybe she was alive still. Herself and her father had emigrated to America. I don't know when, I don't know how old she was. Um, but there is record of her father being in plays in America in 1913. So she was there at that point anyway. <laughs> at some point her father either remarried, I presume he did because in his will it says first wife so he probably remarried and he had two sons. So Peg had two half brothers. Tragically in 1922 her father Robert was killed in a hit and run and she and her two half-brothers were taken in by her uncle. By 1925, she was in Boston studying at the Henry Jewett Repertory and she was also part of the Henry Jewett Players, um, putting on plays and, you know, usually what people studying acting do, put on plays and stuff. <laughs> she was very big in the theatre scene. She um, had, she was in about 10 Broadway plays and Betty Davis saw her once in Henrik Ibsen's The Wild Duck and apparently had said, I want to be just like Peg. It is also said that Betty Davis said that Peg Entwistle was her inspiration for getting into acting. So she probably had some presence on the stage. By April 1927, Peg had married a man called Robert Keith. By 1929, she divorced Robert Keith citing cruelty and saying that she didn't she was not aware that he had been married before and had a child in a previous relationship in may 1932 peg was in la with the play the mad hopes um after this play she was actually cast in her first and only film role it was called 13 women and it was produced by david oselsnick this film was also seen as one of the first earliest female ensemble films because as the title suggests, it was about 13 women. And then on September 16th, 1932, Peg had told her uncle that she was going to meet some friends and going for a walk. And then two days later, on September 18th, 1932, a woman hiking in the hills around the Hollywood sign found a woman's shoe, purse and jacket. Upon looking into the purse, she found a suicide note. And then looking further on down the ravine, she saw the body of a woman. <sighs> the police didn't know who this woman was and put in, they put the suicide note in the paper hoping that it would jog some hoping that it would jog somebody's memory. The suicide note read, I am afraid, I am a coward. I am sorry for everything. If I had done this a long time ago, it would have saved a lot of pain. P E. Upon seeing this note in the paper, Peg's uncle realised that it was his niece and made a formal identification. identification. Peg Entwistle was the first woman to jump, uh, to 
commit suicide on the Hollywood sign. She climbed up the H of the word Hollywood and jumped off. A month after her death, the film 13 Women premiered. Peg and Tussle played the role of Hazel Cousins and originally she originally she had 16 minutes on screen. I know 16 minutes is not a lot but in total but there's it's a big ensemble cast so it's a lot. Um they had cut down before the premiere they cut down her screen time to four minutes because of poor audience ratings. And and funny enough the film is called 13 Women but two of the other women who were cast in the film, their scenes were completely cut so it was only 11 women on screen. Yeah, so on a more supernatural element of the story, um, it is said that Peg and Tussle's ghost haunts the Hollywood sign. So um, in my research apparently gardenias was her favourite scent to wear um, and there's none of that that grows around the Hollywood sign but apparently like people who go for walks there can smell the smell of gardenias. So, yeah, so that's that. Uh, and also people have written, have said they've seen a woman jump from the H of the Hollywood sign, but when they call police or when they go to investigate, there's no evidence um, of anybody there. So, yeah. People have said that they've seen a woman in 1930s clothing around the area looking distressed, and when they go to ask her is she okay or offer help, um, she just disappears. So, yeah. There, there are numerous reports of that, um, if you're interested in that kind of supernatural element of her story. Um, they believe that she haunts the Hollywood sign. Continuity is fucked. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Um, there was one really important thing that I needed to say in this story. And I thought I had it recorded and I didn't. So that's why this is being recorded on my phone because I put away all my equipment. Okay, um, so apparently it's an urban legend, but two days after Peg had committed suicide, there was a letter, her uncle received a letter from the Beverly Hills Playhouse offering her a lead in their next play. Um, some say that it was uh, about, uh, about, that the lead was about a girl who was committing suicide or wanted to commit suicide I don't know um there's no proof, proof it's an urban legend I don't know if that's true or not but I just this, this had this had to go into this video I had to put in yeah um yeah so even like you know you just don't know if like you don't know what's gonna happen around the corner if that's true like if she did get a lead in a play then you know it's just sad. It's sad anyway, but it just, if that's why she committed suicide, that she wasn't getting work, then that, like, it just proves that you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's around the corner. So that's the story of Pig and Trussell. Um, I know it's a very sad, um, first episode. Um, but yeah, I'm, I just, I'm very intrigued by it. Um, you kind of wonder, like, what if, what if there was this letter from the Beverly Hills Play like, Playhouse and it came sooner? Like, would things have changed? Would, would it have been different? Or were, was the other things playing on her mind because she did have such a tragic life? Who knows? I suppose what we can only focus on now is the future, on our future. And just, you know, believing that there is something better around the corner if there, if you don't you know, talk to someone if you're not feeling well emotionally, mentally, um, yeah, like it doesn't have to be, you can go talk to a doctor, you can go talk to um, a family member, a friend, a stranger, um, just talk to somebody. So I'm back at it, um, yeah, I'm hoping to do more of these videos, um, if you have any suggestions of stories, uh, people, topics that I could do, let me know down below and um, yeah. It's been great, it's been fun, and I'll see you later. Bye!